objective. Can we still go to the ballot? I know most likely council will be saying, no, that's it. So let's mm -hmm. say we do get this passed next month. But then they preempt us in April. Is it dead? Or do we just, we push the subject and say, we, we're going to November, let the voters decide. I, mean, I, I need some direction. Because I'm going to have opposition saying, nope, that's it. I want to know the truth. Yeah. No one know. <laughs> it is no man's land. Keep it there, alive. Which is a good place to be. The, the, the deal is, is that once the Home Rule Charter Commission takes the vote, assuming that it's positive to actually uh, send it to the ballot, yeah. then it's going to take a legal action on the other side to remove it. Okay, so the sooner the better. It's sooner the better, but there, it's going to have to take the vote and that's it. There's going to have to be some proactive. The state would have to come in and stop it. Well, not necessarily the state, but a private interest could come in and try to restrain the county from putting it on the ballot. The problem is, is that preemption itself kind of a substantive post-election substantive challenge rather than a pre-election ballot challenge, but that's been changing too across the United States. They've had more luck in keeping stuff off the ballot that runs a ballot preemptive stuff. So you're probably seeing something on Okay, so you know, there's already been a lot of talk that about trying to uh, some language in there to acknowledge that there might be a preemption threat. So I'm here and just take a straight vote and don't worry about no caveat. Yeah. yeah, I think the path that you guys are on is the right path. You just got to see it through to the end. Yeah. Yeah. One other thing. Three things. Organize, organize, organize. You got to get the people involved in this. And you got to go door to door. You got to get, you got to, that's how you, you know, it goes back to what I said about Corbett coming into State College after they did their charter amendment, which was never challenged. Yeah. 530 next month on the fourth. Yeah, and and make, make the governor come down there and say your votes don't count. I'm the very word. Okay, my I no, they don't even have to say that. They say you do what you're told. I'm not for anything except telling you what to do. So you shut up and go do it. I got both of those. Guess what I'm going to tell you. Yeah. And that's the kind of debate you've got to cause. And it's about organizing at the local level that to support this. You know, when you're going into a fight, bring an army with you. Don't come down with five people. You know, it's like come with the crew. And that's, it is about the people. The people make the decisions here. And I always ask the community, you know, I do speaking engagements with, how many people here think government's, the government's bad? Raise your hand. How many people think government's bad? Oh, come on. You Not know. good. <laughs> the federal government's great, right? Okay, it stinks. And I always tell people this. They always, always raise their hand. And I go, guess what? If you think the government's bad, go home and look in the mirror, because you're the government. Not oh, those so knuckleheads that are coming oh, in and stealing your stuff. Right. So one last thing, because I know we're closing up the panel, but at these, the one one great thing about this conference, this, this day that was put together to focus just on rights and is that these guys make you more powerful. To be able to talk about Nicolette, what's happening in Duluth, what's happening with uh, the, the White Earth uh, Reservation, White Earth Tribe, uh, the passage of the uh, rights, law, rights Law, Gabriella in Columbia, uh, Doug in Pittsburgh, these folks make you more powerful because yes. when you go in and talk, it's not just you. There's a there's a movement behind you, there's people behind you, there's other places moving, there are courts moving, there are legislatures moving. This is, you're a piece of all that, but you're not the only thing there. So mm -hmm. that's one of the purposes I think today is to say, the, these folks make you stronger, you need to use their work to leverage other stuff forward, and what you're doing here makes them stronger as well because they can point to this as an example for their work also. And, and one other thing is, I would be remiss if I was to come here and say, guess what I did? I banned fracking in Pittsburgh. I came, you know, I had support. There were the grassroots were there, the citizenry was there as well. I just have to be the person that was sitting in that seat that day when they, you know, they came along and elected. It was all dumb luck, believe me. But, what, but for the people, I didn't have that power to pass on to whoever else I pass that power on to. Yeah. So I want to make sure that I say that very clearly, that you know, Marcellus protests and a bunch of environmental groups or whatever latched on to this, this ordinance that Tom Lindsay came up with. 
and together we won. No one gets there on their own in this business, no matter what you're doing. And now I'd be crazy to pretend to you that I'm this big hero. Did you have I a good big lawyer? Mouth, that's about it. <laughs> you had a good lawyer, right? Yeah, okay. a good lawyer right there. All right, so let's give our panel a round of applause.